this. So today we have something that's fresh new from AF Archery um, and I think you're really gonna like this. It's got everything that I like about it. Well, here's the bow. Look at that. For a fiberglass bow, I love the cosmetics on this. So compared to a laminate bow like this AF Archery bow, the fiberglass ones I like a lot more because it's, I'd say, more historically accurate in terms of its look. You see the modern stuff um, that's laminated, they usually make them really glossy and very glassy. When it's that kind of look, it just looks too synthetic to me. I like the boring leather or, you know, the sinew, the, the birch bark that you can glue on this. I'd rather glue it on the fiberglass bow than on the laminate if I want birch bark. So that's something nice. Although one thing I'd recommend is not using these kind of strings because um, I don't think the Mongols use these type of strings. I recommend sinew. So if you want, you can wrap artificial sinew, which is very cheap to get, wrap it onto here and it will look more historically accurate. In terms of its unstrung shape, reflex, like a lot of them that I've seen. Now, some of the historical ones I've seen are a little bit more deflex when it's unstrung because the horn over time um, gets, gets like that when it's put a lot of pressure. Um, but this one is a straight fiberglass bar. That's totally fine because I care a lot more about what the shape is when it's strong. Um, and the, the, the Siads itself looks quite historical. I've seen a lot of these historical uh, archaeological finds that have similar Siads and I think they based it on those and they look pretty good. Now I gotta say one thing I don't like about AF Archery is that they don't show the draw length, they just show 50 pounds. They don't show 50 at 28 or show the math draw length, stuff like that. It also, this bow doesn't even have the words AF Archery in it, which would have been nice. I thought they would like to market their own bows. Um, but hey, that's their choice if they won't, don't want to put a logo on it. That's cool. Well folks, we got the bow strong and it's quite historically accurate in terms of its look when it's strong. Um, reflex at the handle, deflex down, and then the Siaz itself gives it that reflex bat, but quite gradual. There's a straight portion here, and uh, it's not really recurved. The tips are just straight, giving it a, it's a reflex bow, but not a recurve bow. A lot of Mongol bows in this time is not a recurve because uh, the Siaz don't recurve back um, all the way. Yeah, it's about 50 pounds at 28 inches. I will say for a 50 pound bow, it's got quite narrow CS, and I don't know how durable this is, but I would have to shoot it to know. My recommendation for a bow like this is to beef up the CS uh, just in case it breaks, because a lot of these bows I've seen on these, they typically break right here. So you really want to reinforce that section. Um, sometimes you'll hear cracking on them. That's usually because the glue is starting to settle in and then the reinforcement needs to be reinforced. Well, here's the Mongol bow. Now, Mongol arrows at, at the time show a shorter draw length, so I'm gonna do 28 inches, which this arrow is much longer than it needs. <laughs> okay, slower than the laminate, as expected. There you go. It does make a little bit of creaking for a fiberglass bow. I didn't expect that, though. Okay. The tip of the nose. <laughs> now, yes, I think Mongols use Mediterranean draw as well. They just didn't call it Mediterranean draw. The simple reason is your thumb gets tired over time and you want some flexibility with your fingers. I think most horseback archers would have used both techniques. And you can twist the arrow and you can be bouncing and it still stays relatively on. See? Now I think with the Mongols, they would shoot with both sides of the bow so that you can shoot 360 degrees by switching your, your sides of your bow hand. But you can also switch techniques to relax your fingers instead. Or do cool stuff like that, and I'm sure they would have done that. But standard technique, I think, would have been just thumb draw because it's the most practical thing. These arrows are, whoa, 1400 grain. That is a heavy arrow. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, let's try the Sasanian draw. Sasanian thumb draw. This. Pounds of 28 Mediterranean draw. 164 with the Mediterranean draw. 50 pounds of 28 thumb draw. 177. Well, I really like it. Um, for the price, it's a little pricey for fiberglass bow, but it's got the historic, historically accurate shape um, for a fiberglass reproduction. So I really like that. This would be great for reenacting on a budget um, and much more historically accurate than those budget fiberglass barbels where it doesn't have those CS represented. It's got the right color. I like the choice. Perfect for a Mongol bow of the 13th century made of fiberglass bars.